Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. My name is Pinky, teaching you witchcraft and tarot readings is what I do. Now, as you guys can see, we are having a little dark theme here. And before we get into it, this is going to be a reading for all the zodiac signs, what you need to know right now before we go into the new year. Now, I am going to give it raw and uncut for all of you guys. Uh, recently, I had a few clients tell me, you know, um, you know, Pinky, you're known for being brutally honest, and they think that I am a little bit sweeter on my YouTube channel when I do readings, and I'm not going to lie. I thought about it, and I was like, you know, partly it has a lot to do with the fact that I've noticed it seems like YouTube has shadow banned me, and I think it's because of everything I teach you guys, but I am here to teach you guys before anything else. So with that said, I figured if they're already uh, not helping me promote my channel, I might as well give it to you guys the way I always do, raw and uncut and keeping it 100%, not sugarcoating anything. So going into 2023, I'm going to be more, uh, more raw, more uncut, more transparent for you guys and uh, maybe not sugarcoat. I've never been known for sugarcoating anything. Um, but I do go easier on you guys with the tarot readings. And I think that um, it's it, it's a mixture of, you know, trying to help my channel grow, obviously, and uh, YouTube's not really helping. So at this point, I might as well just give it to you guys the way I give it to all my clients. So let's get into it. This is going to be the raw and uncut version for all the zodiac signs, what you need to know at this point in time. Before we get into the readings, I do want to let you guys know, first of all, Merry Christmas to all of you guys out there for my cappies, like myself. Happy birthday, my lovelies. I wish you guys the very best, and I wish everyone the very best uh, for these holidays. Hopefully, you're spending it with your family and loved ones, those that matter the most, those that don't push them the fuck out of your door and close that shit. <laughs> it is about taking care of yourself 2023, making yourself a priority priority, or learning to make yourself a priority. That's for everyone. So um, without further ado, let's get into it. For those of you guys interested in personal consultations, now is the time to go to our online store, schedule your appointments because we are getting booked rather quickly and I don't want you guys saying that uh, we closed out the calendar. I'm trying to give you guys, all of you guys, the opportunity as well as with spell work. Uh, also, we have for New Year's, we have gift bundles that we're going to be selling on my online store. These are specific ritualized and prepared candles. Um, and it's going to be gift sets. Uh, like I said, bundles that are going to come not only with the candle, but with, you know, uh, mojo bags, everything. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I'm sure you've seen all of that, what I've been doing behind the scenes. Anyways, let's get into it. We're going to start off here with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels guide us. Allow us to see clearly and concisely what is unfolding. What is it that Aries needs to know at this point in time? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay. We have cards flying out. You guys give me, by the way, don't mind the freaking mess I have in the background. We are busy and you know. All right. So we're starting off here with the Knight of Swords and the Six of Pentacles. Okay. So I see you guys urgently going towards some type of assistance. For some of you guys, it could be helping out uh, a relative, a friend, a loved one, someone that is in your need or in need of assistance or help. You also have the Knight of Cups here. There is some type of revelation that is going to be unfolding for you guys um, by the end of this month. What they're showing me here is for a lot of you guys, there is almost a need of some type of support. I feel like for some of you guys, it could be friends that come to you. Uh, it could be loved ones, relatives that are needing some type of assistance for you to help them, guide them, uh, towards the path that they should be walking. Um, what I'm hearing is for some of you guys, do it with a kind heart. Um, what I mean by that is try the best you can not to be judgmental. It's going to be very important. Why? Because you've been there, Aries. You've been where 
you've been broken, whether it's emotionally, physically, mentally, and all you really needed was someone to be there for you and to ask you how you're doing. A lot of the times, you know, we get so wrapped up into relying on people that are extremely strong and we see them as strong and we never really stop and think for a second, are they okay? Sometimes the strong people are the ones that carry and deal with the most bullshit. And like I said, I feel like you've been there. I feel like you understand. And for some of you guys, it could be that you're busy or it could be that it just almost feels like having to deal with something. Maybe it's a friend, someone that you've dealt that has had issues about the same thing. For some, it could be relationship wise. It could be the person they're dealing with. And it almost feels like, a job at this point, like, you know, but like I said, just be there for them, be present, try the best you can to help uh, or give a helping hand. Um, we're not talking about money, not to get it mixed. It's not about money. It's about allowing them to feel like they can cry on your shoulder. And that's going to be very important. Why? Because remember the deeds we do now will definitely come back to us tenfold in a positive way. If it's negative, then you're going to deal with that as well. Feeling like, you're going through some similar situation and they're not really there for you. So that's going to be very important for you guys for this month or the remaining of this month. Like I said, not money wise, you guys, they're saying not money. Uh, do not go about trying to help, especially if it's someone or a family member uh, that has a tendency of relying so much on you guys. You don't want to uh, continue being the issue because if you continue, you know, basically fixing people's problems financially, uh, you're not really helping them. So just be mindful about that, okay? All right, let's go to Taurus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is what is it that Taurus needs to know at this point in time? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. <clears throat> Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. By the way, how are you guys? Are you guys excited about the holidays? We are, obviously, birthday celebrations, <laughs> but it's exciting spending time with <laughs> with family. Sorry. By the way, I'm still dealing with this freaking cough, you guys. It's crazy. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that it's been freezing out here in California, especially where I live. Um, yeah, it's been very, very crazy. All right, Taurus. So what you need to know at this point in time, there's major upheaval or changes that are going to be happening for you guys career and financially. I feel like you guys are going towards the goals that you've been trying to set out for yourself or you've been trying to achieve for quite a while. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you guys. I feel like these changes, like keep this in mind, Taurus, okay? And I feel like it's even going to drag out all the way to March. So if at some point you feel like there's a lot of changes happening at your work or where, you, you know, the place of where you work, where you make money, there's a lot of changes adapt to those changes, but not for one second, think or doubt that as an example, if people are being laid off left and right, don't sit there and listen to people talking about that there's layoffs, that they're laying people off, that it's really difficult. Um, don't allow them to discourage you is what they're telling me. Do not allow them to discourage you. This is not going to affect you in any shape, way, or form. If anything, I feel like you're going into 2023 with major transformation when we're talking about finances and career, but you got to stay mentally strong, mentally focused. I will give you guys an example. Many, many, many moons ago, I went into this industry. This was a long time ago. I went into this industry where people would tell me, first of all, they don't take people that are young. They don't take them very seriously. They don't help push them to continue going up the ladder. Then they started doing that for me. But then I started hearing other people that have more experience and more years there telling me, well, if you're trying to go to a different department, that's never going to happen because they've never done that. They keep people in that same, like there's no cross training or whatever. And I said, fuck that. I'm not going to listen to that. So I went above and beyond doing more than what was expected of me. And guess what? Top docs started to notice that. And they yanked me to a different department, a department that made much more money uh, with more authority, management position. I was basically achieving things that everyone from the very beginning were telling me, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't. And if anything, 
I'm a true Capricorn, right? So if anything, I feel like that ignited the fire in me. And I was like, bet, I'm so going to like outwork everyone because here's the thing. And this is something that a lot of people don't understand. My clients that run their own business businesses know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this. Anybody, not anyone has charisma. And that is true. Not everyone is capable of alluring people to want to help them, right? But here's the thing. Regardless if you have that or not, if you don't allow anyone else to outwork you, sooner than later, it is inevitable that people will notice your work ethic. And I'm not talking about like being quiet or when you go to meetings, you know, a lot of people kind of shy away from like expressing or giving opinions and stuff because they think going under the radar is better because they're not disturbed and they don't deal with the bosses or whatever. But if you're like me, and I've always been the type that loves to grow and to prove myself, not for anyone else, but for myself, that's when you speak up. That's when you express your ideas. That's when you're not scared of judgment and you just feel your intuition and you just go about, you know, being your own authority self. And believe me when I tell you, bosses notice that and they admire and respect that. Even if you have scuffles with them, which I've had many of those where I didn't just, I was never a yes man. I was never a yes woman. Um, I would always express, you know, I think maybe that's the reason why I was always, I always landed very good positions. But anyways, what I'm saying to this is don't allow people to discourage you or to persuade you uh, to doing less than what you're capable of, Taurus. 2023 is going to be your year. We have the seven of pentacles with the tower card here. There is a pattern that we've done in the past when we're talking about finances and career, where even you've sacrificed, where you've gone above and beyond. And there was like this feeling of disappointment and like, why the fuck should I try? Right. But what they're telling you is really step up this year because 2023 is going to be major. You have the ace of swords and the hierophant. There's a higher elevation here that's happening when we're talking about career and finances. So definitely take advantage of that, Taurus. All right, we're going to go now to Gemini. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Gemini, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I already know some of you guys are going to be like, I can't see the cards that we're pulling out, but you know, darkness is my forte. <laughs> what can I say? Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. <clears throat> All right, here we go. We have the King of Wands, the Eight of Pentacles, the Five of Cups, the Two of Pentacles, and the Seven of Cups. I'm going to be straightforward with you, Gemini. <laughs> and this is like, take it seriously. I feel like I'm doing you a disservice by being super nice and polite about this. I feel like the more blunt I am about it, the more I do you a service for your highest good. Stop looking to the past. Stop comparing yourself and stop reliving something from the past that has been long and gone. It's like there is this energy of I want to revisit the past. I want to like the past was the best time of my life or the past was a better situation than what I'm dealing now. No, it's not. And the thing about it is that if you stay in that mentality, guess what's going to happen? You are continuously putting yourself in situations that make you feel like the past was the best. And if you're thinking that way, guess what's going to happen? The best is never going to come to you because you have yet to live. You have yet to experience, Gemini. I don't care if you're 80. It doesn't mean that you stop living. There is a need for you, like, basically to get off your ass and to make things happen, to find the passion, to find that what motivates you, that, that triggers you and makes you want to achieve and wants to, you know, like, I feel like there is this demoralizing type of energy. And what spirit is saying is this is all in your head. Like you're the one that keeps putting yourself in situations that bring confusion and that make you feel like you don't know where you stand with people. 
And at this point, it's time for you to stop questioning that and start making yourself a priority. Like I said, 2023's theme is going to be learning to put yourself first. And this is all for all the signs, not just with you, Gemini, but what they're telling you is stop making excuses and make things happen. You have absolutely no reason to make up an excuse of why you're not moving forward. Um, I understand situations and circumstances happen. And sometimes we're dealt with bad cards. Sometimes we're dealt with good cards. But everything in life is temporary, Gemini. And if you're going through it, this too shall pass. I promise you, like the seasons, everything passes. So start being more optimistic and more positive. And like I said, stop reliving the past, my dear Gemini, because if you keep thinking that way, you're never like, you're not allowing new experiences to unfold. You know, something I tell my clients, instead of thinking like the best was the best, the past was the best. I mean, think about it as the best is yet to come. Like I said, I don't care if you're 80. I don't care if you're a hundred years old, you're still living. And if you're still living, it's, it's, it's momentum, that energy that is still running through you. So make that happen, Gemini. All right, now let's go to, that was Gemini third, fourth house, Cancer. Okay, let's see what's going on with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What's going on with Cancer? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? By the way, if you guys like these readings, definitely share, comment, like, subscribe to our channel. I see you. Those of you guys that watch my videos <laughs> or watch my spells and don't subscribe, I see you. All right. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right. Here we go. So we have the Hanged Man, Seven of Swords. You're debating, you're confused about something. Seven, sorry, Justice. <laughs> the Hermit and the Four of Pentacles. Okay. So what they're telling you here, uh, Cancer, is I see you guys really trying to figure a situation out, something where you feel like you've been lied to or you've been deceived about it. Um, they're showing me here the justice card. So karma will unfold. Now pump the brakes real quick. If it was you that did someone dirty, Cancer, I'm telling you right now, like, whether you're dealing with them or not, it doesn't matter. Like if, like an example, if you're not communicating with them anymore, like it doesn't matter. My advice would be before the new year, light a candle, say a prayer and ask your spirit guides. I ask my spirit guides to assist me in releasing the energy of whoever you did wrong. I send you off. I cut the cord and the link connected to me and from me to you. I ask for your I ask for your forgiveness in spirit and I ask to be released of this karmic debt. I send you off with love and I close the chapter in this. Now the reason why I'm saying this is again because if you did someone dirty and we're not talking about like um like you cheated on them or something like that which if you did you know it's, I'm gonna be honest. I feel like if you're dealing with a situation where you feel like you've been caught, I wouldn't necessarily say like fess up, but apologize for betraying the trust that they gave to you. Because I feel like right now, whatever it is that you're putting out is exactly what's coming back. But more specifically, they're telling me if you've done wrong to people, that didn't deserve it. And we're talking about spell work. We're talking about candle magic. We're talking about stuff like that. If you've gone above and beyond to trigger or to make someone deal with what you thought they should have dealt with some type of consequence, what they're telling you right now is you need to cut the cord of that. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but when you've done spell work, right, can't really mess with that. You have to let it run its course. Why? Because it can backfire and it can backfire hard. But let's say it's been eight, nine months, maybe a year, maybe more that you felt betrayed and you felt hurt and you did something. Um, 
that link to what you put out is still out there, regardless if it's run its course or not. And sometimes you want to make good on your spiritual side, especially those of you guys that have had nothing but difficulties when we're talking about finances. If you've been struggling and it seems like you haven't been able to get on your feet, or to stabilize your finances. These are only the cancers that I'm talking to. If you feel like it's been one struggle after another, there's a lot of karmic debt that needs to be paid. And we're not talking about necessarily just this lifetime. So again, cutting the cords and releasing things. And we are able to do that, by the way, if you weren't aware, now you are. If there is karmic debt that you owe to someone, whether you're aware of it or not, you can easily do a prayer that is specifically done with specific archangels, like an example, Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel. And you can ask that karmic, those ties, those cords to the past or past lives, they be released. You forgive them and may they forgive you and let it be done. And what you're doing is you're helping open the path for you. For progress, because I see that there's been this unstable when we're instability when we're talking about finances, and it has a lot to do with your karma cancer. So, word of advice, please listen. All right, moving on. However, if this is not you, cancer, the one that's been dealing with this type of buckery type of energy, um, then obviously this message is not for you. All right, moving along. We're going to Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I keep dropping. All right, we're going to take these cards. All right, so we have the Nine of Swords, the Five of Wands, the Two of Pentacles, the Hermit and the Four. Okay, I'm going to put them back. I'm not connecting with them. Leo, sorry about that. All right, Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Leo's. All right, here we go. Nine of swords. Oh, no, it's the eight of swords. We pulled out the nine earlier. Ten of swords. Jesus Christ. King of swords. Empress. Three of pentacles. Okay. So what I'm hearing is I feel like for some of you guys, you guys have moved on from a situation. This could have been a past relationship, past connection. Uh, you could have been dealing with an air sign, could have been a Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra type of energy. However, what they're showing me here is, I feel like you're getting your power back, Leo, especially if you've recently broken up. It's almost like a feeling that perhaps there wasn't a lot of excitement, or maybe you were even frustrated that you didn't really see like things were progressing like in, in your romantic sector. Um, because I, be, I feel like a bit of frustration, like <laughs> now I know Leo's don't have an issue with this, but for some reason it's like, I see you looking around and it's like not a fly in sight. Um, so that just indicates to me a bit of stagnation when we're talking about love and romance. However, that's quickly going to be changing Leo. I feel like you're going into the new year, 2023. Being able to draw in a lot of that energy without even trying. You have the Empress card here. So the Empress card is all about stay in your receptive energy. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to dress extra. You don't have to, you know, bat your eyes uh, at someone. You're just naturally going to be drawing in new opportunities. For some of you guys, there is a connection that's coming in. And it may be through work or it may be through someone that works with you that introduces you to a new person. But they are telling you if that air sign is still around, <laughs> excuse me, if that air sign you're still dealing with, it's time to close the door. It's time to release yourself from that type of energy. Now, 
for those of you guys that have been or have dealt with this person for a very long time, we're talking about people that are in our lives um, on every day, kind of like baby daddy, baby mama type of energy. If that is what you're dealing with and that's what's coming up in your reading, what they're telling you is a lot of their energy uh, has affected your romantic life. Uh, this could be like an evil eye. It could be like, you know, really heavy energy, kind of like when people uh, can get over you, but they are so stubborn in not like realizing that it's love and that's why they're hurt. And instead they turn that into like pride and they, you know, don't want to see you progress or like basically they don't want to see you find better, that type of energy but that's being lifted. And I, I don't feel like you guys need to do anything. You're going to notice. Um, you're going to notice third week of uh, January, things start to progress very quickly where new, new people are going to be introduced to you. Uh, Leo, take advantage of this opportunity. Stay in your beautiful energy because people are just going to be naturally drawn to you. All right. Now let's go to... Virgo, let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? <laughs> Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. We have the Seven of Cups, the Star card, the Page of Wands, Two of Pentacles, and the Hermit. All right, Virgo, pay attention to people that are distracting you from the path that you've been walking for a while. So what I mean by that is if you have goals or you're trying to achieve certain things and all of a sudden uh, people are being drawn to you or even friends and relatives are like, hey, <coughs> sorry, are like, hey, let's party, let's go out, let's do this, let's do that. That's fine and dandy and it's okay to have a good time. But if you have a mission, Stay focused, Virgo. I feel like that's going to be crucial. And it's also going to determine how you start off the new year. So it's fine to party. It's fine to have a good time. But you need to learn to balance everything in your life. Don't overdo things is what they're saying. If you've been drinking a lot lately, start checking that. Don't overdo it. If you've been eating a lot lately, don't overdo it. If you've been overworking yourself, don't overdo it. The reason why they're telling you this is because you may start to experience a bit of resistance there, resistance in the physical aspect. So what I mean by that is when you're overworking yourself or when you're drinking a lot or when you're not taking care of yourself, we are like invincible, right? We feel like we're invincible. We keep doing whatever the fuck we're doing until one day you just can't get out of bed and you don't know why you just feel tired. You feel exhausted. You don't want to get to that point. So what they're telling you is be present in your body, Virgo. Be present. And if there is anything that you've been feeling like uh, you need to take care of, an example, if you're a smoker, you feel like, you know, your lungs have been hurting, stuff like that, you know, drink teas, uh, do, you know, Irish sea moss type of thing where you can cleanse yourself and detoxify and clear out all that mucus. Um, if you've been, as an example, having a lot of headaches, it's time to cleanse yourself, do yourself a neck cleanse. It is important to maintain uh, the balance within your physical body because they're showing me the physical aspect of you. So again, make sure to make that a focus. You don't want to throw yourself off balance and then have to deal with, you know, illnesses and stuff like that, that could have been prevented. All right, my lovelies. Now, that was Virgo, Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. We have the Lovers, the Six of Cups, the Death Card, Ten of Pentacles, Holy crud. <laughs> and six of swords. Okay. Libra, for those of you guys that are single, things are going to start to pick up for you in a very positive way. 
You're letting go of things from the past that are no longer serving you, detaching yourself. For some of you guys, it could have been almost uh, a feeling of a soulmate type of energy, a connection of someone on a soul level, someone that got you, someone that understood you. Um, I feel like there is a revisiting of that, but within that process, there is also you taking action, which is something I never see. Don't come at me, Libra, but you guys are very indecisive. That's what frustrates me about you guys. But I see you more proactive. I see you being more decisive. I see you no longer continuing the patterns of things from the past when we're talking about relationships. So what I mean by that is you guys have a tendency of, stay, of staying longer than what it's needed. As an example, if a relationship has outgrown or both of you guys have outgrown each other, it's like you stay longer because you don't want the confrontation and you don't want to feel like you're giving up. In that process, you end up feeling like you're taken for granted or like they don't appreciate the effort that you do when it comes to relationships. Why? Because you have a tendency of sacrificing yourself. However, they're showing me an ending cycle of something that you've done in the past when we're talking about relationships. And in that ending of that cycle, that behavior, you become more clear, you become more assertive when we're talking about relationships. And that's what brings to you the union of a partnership, your lifetime partner, or the person you're going to end up getting married to. So it's almost like a habit of something that you're aware, whether you're aware of it now or whether you will become aware of it going into 2023, where you're like, you know what? I've done this in the past. I've done it so many times. I'm not going to do this anymore. And you start to embrace a new way of dating or a new way of approaching relationships where you're not sacrificing so much of yourself. And what happens you finally meet a person that is going to meet you halfway. You finally meet a person that is willing to put in the effort. You finally meet a soulmate. So for a lot of you guys, if you felt like in the past, you were holding on to a toxic relationship and you thought, quote unquote, that it was a soulmate, my dear, that's not a soulmate. And anyone that tells you it's a soulmate so that you can keep holding on to something that is never going to happen. Like that's not healthy in any shape, way or form. And this is something that I deal with on everyday readings. People swear up and down. Oh, I've done so many readings with other people. And they always tell me it's a soulmate. Honey, if you come at me and you're telling me it's a soulmate and I pull out the seven of swords and the devil, there's no fucking way that's a soulmate. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but it's not. So I feel like there is a past behavior that you've done in relationships in the past, maybe romanticized about them. Maybe they treated you amazing the beginning and then they started treating you like shit and you held on because you were waiting to see that person that you met in the beginning. But that's manipulation. That's not, it's a tactic of manipulation. It's the, you know, <laughs> the bait and hook type of thing. So anyways, you're not doing that anymore, Libra. You're going into 2023 more assertive more confident in yourself and knowing your worth. And that's amazing because then that's when, you know, stability comes in. The union you've been looking for or the partner you always wish you could have had because sometimes that happens, you guys. When we start working on ourselves and we realize this is a habit I'm doing, I shouldn't be doing this shit because it ends up hurting uh, you learn your lesson and when you become more aware, then the universe presents to you or brings to you the person that is going to absolutely appreciate everything about you, even the fact that you are cautious because they can respect that because that shows that you're worthy. That shows that you value yourself, Libra. Okay. Okay. Now I'm telling you guys right now, if you've been dealing with a relationship, those of you guys that are in a relationship, Libra, and you've been holding on because in your head, that's your soulmate, you're going to have a rude awakening. Why? Because a true soulmate's coming in night and day. All right, let's move along. Let's see who is next. That was Libra. Scorpio. All right, let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. For the month 
remaining of December. Let's see, what is it that they need to know at this point in time? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Scorpio. We have the Six of Cups, the Death card. Ooh, Ten of Pentacles. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with a Libra. Five of Pentacles and the Emperor. All right, so <laughs> take this not as a warning, Scorpio, but what they're telling you is if you're aiming to stabilize your finances, if you're trying to get a house, if you're trying to get a car, if you're trying to attain material things, it is crucial and very important to maintain the focus and to save. I feel like because sometimes we have a habit of things going really good, we think it's always going to be that way. And we start spending on things that we really don't need. And what they're telling you here is be smart about your money, Scorpio. If people are asking you for money or if people are reaching out, family member, friends, they need a favor, da 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 da. They've done this in the past. Do not like stop saving people. And I think that this was a reading that we did in the middle of the month, if I'm not mistaken, the love reading or the general reading, one of those. But they were telling you, you're finally done with saving people. You're done with dealing with other people's drama. And what they're telling you here is you need to cut that out. For those of you guys that have a tendency of, like I said, uh, as an example, you like to spoil your kids. And right now times are difficult and they're still expecting. And then you feel like shit because you're like, oh, well, how do I teach them that, you know, there's not enough right now. So you still do it out of not because you want to, but because you feel like you have to. And what spirit is telling you is you need to be more authoritative when it comes to the things that you do for other people. And when I say authoritative, I mean, in the sense when you need to say no, say no, Scorpio. Because I'm not saying that you're struggling, but I don't want you to struggle. Because again, there is there is something that has to do with either <clears throat> overspending or that you're trying to save because you're trying to make something happen, but you never fully are able to see uh, that manifestation. And the reason for it is because you're very like scattered when it comes to your finances. So again, be smart about that. And I see you guys really booming and I see you guys doing really, really good. I'm not going to lie. You have the 10 of pentacles here, the emperor, the death card, the six of cups, beautiful energy, transformative energy, growth, advancement, the emperor being in, in, in your energy, being authoritative. Um, but it also indicates having the need to be sturdy when it comes to saying no, no means no. And the five of pentacles is people leeching off of you with the six of cups. So again, learn to say no. <laughs> All right. I can swear I that's the same message they gave you guys. I don't know if it was the love readings or the beginning of the month readings for you guys. All right. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio. I mean, Sagittarius, sorry. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. <clears throat> Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Sagittarius, you have the Nine of Swords, the Chariot, the Ten of Wands, the Three of Pentacles, and the Emperor card here. All right, Saggies. For those of you guys that drink, my advice is from now all the way to the middle of January, be very careful not to be drinking and driving as I do see the probability of getting, um, you know, a DUI or getting pulled over, uh, that type of energy. So again, be mindful. We're not putting that out into the universe. We're just cautiously being mindful of, using common sense. If you're going to drink, don't drive. If you're going to drive, don't drink. There's always an Uber or whatever you guys get, a Lyft. Uh, be smart about it. 
Um, now they're also showing me here for some of you guys, there is, you're going into the new year with aspiration. There is something that is triggering you or that will be triggering you to, I don't necessarily want to say get your act together, but that's basically what's coming through getting your act together. This could be that you get more motivated. This could get be that you get more focused. For some of you guys, it's working on yourself, meaning working on the physical aspect of yourself, um, perhaps changing your diet, make uh, being more proactive, <coughs> putting yourself in, you know, like going to the gym or something like that. For others of you, it could just be that you're becoming more goal oriented, like you are putting your mind or setting your mind to achieving certain type of goals. And what spirit is telling you is you're more than capable of making that happen, but it is very crucial and very important to maintain that motivation. So what I mean by that is as an example, we don't all roll out of the bed and wanting to take on the world, <laughs> wanting to take on the world, right? Sometimes we struggle. Sometimes there's days where we really don't feel like doing shit. And that's absolutely normal. But what they're telling you here is that it's going to take you to make and keep yourself motivated. And by being proactive in that, you will be more than capable of achieving the goals that you set out for 2023. Basically, what they're telling you is you're the chariot. You are the driver. It is up to you with your strength, with your desire, <laughs> with your desire, with your motivation you're pushing the chariot you're making it go in the direction that you choose the direction that you want it's going to take for you to put effort so stop you know expecting other people to motivate you and make yourself like as an example if there's something that you're trying to do you're trying to get better at your job or you're trying to i don't know you start a new business or something and you don't really necessarily know what you're doing set out, um, as an example, putting your alarm, uh, for your cell phone to remind you of, I don't know if you're on social media, as an example of posting, uh, a little bit more active so that it can draw in more clients, more customers, basically make, write down exactly the goals that you're trying to achieve, write it down because that's, what's going to help you keep yourself motivated. Sagittarius. And like I said, don't drink and drive. All right. Now let's go to, <laughs> I'm going to get a gum here, you guys, because my throat is really not cooperating. All right. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to do? What is it that they need to know? Sorry. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, one more. All right, here we go. All right, Capricorn, we have the Justice, the Two of Cups. Wow, the High Priestess, the Five of Cups, and the Ace of Cups. Okay. All right, Capricorn. All those people that did you wrong when we're talking about love and romance, for some of you guys, this could have been a recent connection, someone that you were dealing with or that you were dating. I feel like they're dealing with karma. <laughs> They've come to the understanding that there is no one better for them out there than you, Capricorn. There is an aha moment that's happening in their mind right now where they're in their feelings because they feel like I really effed up. I really dropped the ball. What do I need to do to get Capricorn back? And I see you understanding or becoming aware of that. And you're just sitting there waiting, like, get it together. If you're going to fight for me, fight for me. Prove it to me. Show me. 
And this is beautiful energy, Capricorn, because this is you and your power. Now, for you guys, it could have been that you've seen this situation as a missed opportunity or something that didn't fully manifest for you. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with a Libra. For others of you, you may be dealing with a water energy, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. For others of you, it could have been a feeling of a connection that was, they felt very familiar to you, Capricorn. So for some of you guys, it could have been a connection from a previous life, especially if it was going amazing and something happened where it almost felt like it took you guys in two different directions. But they're definitely becoming aware of that. And in the month, in this month of December, going into January, I see someone coming back around, someone that really dropped the ball with you, someone that is willing to make it happen to prove to you that you are the one they want and they're not going to let you go. They're putting that effort. They're going above and beyond for you guys. They're really fighting to get you guys back. The five of cups indicates to me regret, remorse, especially with the karma card there, justice. It is like, I did you wrong when you did nothing but good to me. And they're realizing this. And the Ace of Cups, it is delivering or professing their love. For some of you guys, this could be news. It could have been a person you were dealing with, but they never really shared their emotions. And they're finally telling you, you know what? I was pissed at you, Capricorn. I was in my feelings. And the truth is, I was jealous. They're literally... Oh, like, I feel like they're vomiting their feelings for you. And this is catching you a little bit off surprise or a little bit um by surprise. But with the high priestess, I feel like deep down inside, you kind of knew that would always happen or at some point it would happen. So <clears throat> now for those of you guys that are single, there was some type of hurt or some type of pain connected to love and romance. I feel like for some of you guys, could have been a loss for others of you. It was a feeling of like a chapter, an old chapter uh, coming to an end and perhaps not moving on quite. Um, you could have even dated multiple people, uh, but I feel like from that relationship, the one that really meant a lot to you, Capricorn, I feel like you kind of closed yourself off and you weren't necessarily open to love. You could have been dating, but dating doesn't necessarily mean that you're emotionally available. I feel like at this point, you're going into the new year, becoming more emotionally available, becoming more aware of what it is that you want and what you're looking for in a partner. And I feel like you're finally meeting that person or that person's coming in for you guys, where it's going to feel very much like home to you. It's going to feel very comfortable. Um, like you can be yourself with this person and this person will feel the same in return. Like I said, for some of you guys, it could be a Libra. For others, it could be a water energy. It could be Pisces here, Neptune energy here as well. So uh, yeah, definitely good positive energy here, Capricorn. We are going into your season. So admirers may be coming out of left field and right field and center and backwards. If you're anything like me, you're already experiencing that crazy. All right. Now let's go to Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right. Here we go. Oof. You have the tower. Seven of Cups, Five of Swords, Page of Swords, Page of Pentacles. Okay. <laughs> I am seeing, I am seeing Aquarius. Your idea or perception of a situation completely crumbling completely changing for some of you guys it could have been a situation where you felt like there was a lot of confusion um there wasn't necessarily a lot of clarity 
You could have been dealing with someone that perhaps had you feeling confused, feeling like you didn't know where they stood with you. I hear you guys questioning, like, are they playing with my mind or are they playing with my feelings? It's like hot and cold type of thing. By the, I should say, by the beginning of 2023, what you need to know is that you need to let go of what is not working. Stop forcing things, Aquarius. Stop forcing things. Now, this could be in many different aspects. For some of you guys, it could be that you're trying to force a relationship. You've been trying, making excuses for a person's very bad behavior or the way they were treating you. For others of you, especially those of you guys that are single, perhaps you were forcefully trying to make love appear. So when I hear forcefully, it indicates to me like seeing a person or dealing with a person that has all the red flags all over them, but you were like, I have, but I want to give them an opportunity because I want to give myself an opportunity. Even though you were fully aware that this person was like a walking red flag. Um, and what they're telling you is at this point, whatever it is that you've been doing that hasn't been working, it's time for you to stop doing that, Aquarius. And it's time for you to see it in a very different way. Approach love in a very different way. Approach friendships in a very different way. Even work and finances. There is something that is not working and you continuously keep trying to make it work and it's just not working out. And what they're telling you is stop trying to force things. Take a step back. Really analyze. What are the things that you've been doing that you've been like really, really trying to make work? What is it, the steps that you've been taking? Because those are the steps that are not working. It's time to change your perception. It's time for you to get a different vision, to be able to see things from a very different perspective, because whatever it is that you've been doing, it's not working out. It's time for you to stop forcing it. So like I said, if you're single, you've been trying to find love, Stop trying to force it. The moment you bring it back to yourself, things will start to flow very organically. If you've been in a relationship and you've been dealing with someone that is immature and that is very prideful and that is stuck to their guns and they just don't want to change, nothing's coming from that and you're wasting time. It's time to stop forcing it. For others of you, you're chasing around this person or this connection, you're spying on them or looking at them through social media, could be vice versa, it is a general reading, but what they're telling you is, it's time to stop doing that because it's not working. You're not standing out by looking at them through a fake profile. You're not, like, you're not doing anything to progress. It's time to progress, it's time to move forward, Aquarius. So see things from a very different perspective. Finances as well. If you notice that there's this thing going on, where every time you try to force something, it just falls apart like in your hands and there's this frustration. It means that you're holding on too tight, my dear Aquarius. And when we hold too tight to things out of fear, out of past experiences, out of whatever it is, when we hold on to things for dear life, because it, what it really means is that we're scared of losing it. But if you're vibrating from that energy, guess what's going to happen? You're going to lose it. So stop doing that. It's time that you train your thoughts. You're an Aquarius. You're able to manifest things through visualization, through using your mind. So it's time you start training your mind to think or see things positively or to look towards the future, to focus on the outcome of what you're trying to draw in so that you can live that exact experience. All right. All right. All right, and finally, last but not least, Pisces. Let's see what's going on for Pisces. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Pisces, you have the Five of Cups, the Lovers, the Hermit, 
justice, and the four of cups. All right. I don't know why. I feel like I feel like every time uh, we look into Pisces, right? <laughs> the it, it, love is always connected to these readings. Of course, your water sign, right? You're the twelfth sign. You have a little of all the signs, right? Because you're the twelfth one. You have a lot of Aquarian energy. You have a lot of Aries energy, right? The baby of the zodiac. It's really hard for you guys to control your emotions. It's um I recently had a conversation with my sister. She's a Pisces. And she was like, you know, I don't think I'm an emotional person. I've never been an emotional person. And I laughed, right? Because she has a very strong temper. She's ruled by emotion. All her major life decisions have always been made on emotion. So I thought it was hilarious when she said that. So whether you're the Pisces that shows emotion and you're sensitive and you're nurturing or whether you're the opposite, right? Because every sign has the shadow side and Maybe you're not the emotional type, the type to express what you feel. You keep everything to yourself, right? But you're very sensitive to energies. And it puts you in a position where and this is something Piscean energy has an issue with all the time when we're talking about relationships, right? It's like you kind of morph yourself into your partner, right? When you're emotionally invested in someone, you start listening to their music, you start dressing similar to their style. And the reason for that is because you're mutable, right? So you can completely transform yourself based on the energies around. You morph into the environment, which is why Pisces needs to be very careful with the people you surround yourself with. And I feel like when we look into relationships or Pisces, there is always an imbalance because you guys have a tendency of overgiving, right? That's your nature. Neptune's energy there. murky waters sometimes the feelings could be a little bit overbearing to the partner and to you could be very triggering when you don't feel like you're being appreciated now what they're showing me here Pisces in all this message is that you need to learn to find yourself. You need to learn who you are, Pisces. Because there is this energy of not fully moving on or not fully mourning the loss of a relationship when you've gotten into another relationship. So there is a theme here, a theme of before I get out of this relationship, I go and fall for this person. And it's not that you do it on purpose. You can't help it, right? You're romantic at heart. But you fall in love with the idea of people. And then when you start to get to know them, when you start to deal with them on everyday basis, you force yourself to fall a little bit more. Right? The delusion that Neptune sometimes brings. Jupiter's expansion. I want the best of the best. I'm going to treat my man like a king or I'm going to treat my woman like a queen. Going above and beyond. There's an imbalance here. Five of Cups is the morning or not realizing 
the mourning or the suffering or the pain or the hurt that you've carried from previous relationships and you drag that into the next relationship. And then you feel alone or you feel misunderstood or you feel like people don't understand what it is that you want, even though you express to them what you want. And it's quite simple, Pisces. You're picking the wrong people. You're choosing the wrong people. So what I want you to understand is that when you realize who you are, what you bring to the table, what it is that you want, what it is that you expect from your partner, you have standards. And when we have standards, they either meet those standards or there's the door. So you, in essence, what you're doing is you're discarding the ones that are not even trying so that they don't waste your time. What they're telling you right now, what you need to know at this point in time, Pisces, is you need to learn to find yourself again. You need to heal from previous relationships or past experiences that not have that have not always been good. And based on that, you need to go into your next relationship or your next connection or your next partnership with a cool mind. Not hurt and pained because they let you down and out of spite and anger, I'm going to go mess around with someone else and, or I'm going to deal with someone else and then you fall for them or I should say you fall for the illusion of who they are and then it's like a never ending cycle. Let 2023 be the year that you don't base decisions off of your emotions, Pisces, that you make decisions with your mind, with a clear mind, because that's also going to help you discern the people that are right for you. And you're no longer going to be put in a position of being taken for granted, misappreciated and mistreated, Pisces. 2023 is the year where you value yourself so high, where you value yourself so high that you only start to date people of higher quality. All right, my lovelies. I hope you really take this message because I feel like they're communicating it very strongly. Stop entertaining people that are just wasting your time or stop entertaining yourself because you're bored and then you end up falling for the people that you were bored with and then you find out that they were just not the one. Do you get what I'm saying? All right, my lovelies. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. I hope they help you. I want to wish every single one of you guys a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and we will see each other soon. Till then, love you guys and I will see you guys soon. Bye-bye.